Welcome back to The Glenn Alex Show. I am here with Aaron Phillips, who shared his tremendous story of his path to health. Yes, thank and you for the opportunity. You are very welcome. In this segment, we do a Q&A. So I have some questions from health seekers, and I think I'll throw the first one out to Aaron. All right. This one comes from Tony, and she wants to know how to combat severe depression. Wow. First of all, seek help. Seek, like, like we mentioned before, yes. reach out to somebody. Because when I suffer, started suffering my depression, I didn't realize it, except I noticed my moods were changing. And, of course, my wife pointed them out to me. <laughs> uh, and she actually was the one who encouraged me to go get help and talk to somebody who's yes. outside the forest. Yes. And uh, that's got to be the first thing. Reach out to somebody. Talk about what's going on. It's like wringing out the sponge that's full of water. Mm hmm it makes it easier to understand what's going on. So step one has to be to seek help, whether it's a professional or a friend or somebody that you can trust. Talk about what's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. An, an objective person, again, who has your highest good in mind, mm -hmm. is it would be the first step. Absolutely. And a, another um, part of that is um, some kind of medication evaluation that could help alleviate the physical symptoms of depression. Mm -hmm. I don't believe medication will cure depression. It'll alleviate the physical symptoms so you are more available to do the mental work. And they're good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. It's yes, absolutely. Seek, seek help. Seek help. Even if it's a priest or rabbi yes. or, or somebody like that, just get it out and process it. Yes. That's really a key. Get so. it out and process mm -hmm. it. I will add to that maybe not... De severe depression has a, a level of um, um, le lethargy that you may not be able to move or be physical. However, movement, moving the body is very important uh, with depression because it helps release the endorphins, the mm -hmm. feel-good chemicals in the brain, and it just, it just reactivates your body on a different level. So if you can get out and walk, or just walk in place in your home, or if you enjoy dancing, put on some music that you like, and mm -hmm. just sway to the music. Do something that will get your body in motion so you can break up the monotony of, of that same patterned thinking. Four walls. Yes, right. that's keeping you in that situation. I do CrossFit now three times a week. Awesome. I never thought I would do something like that, and, and I'm testing my body, testing my limits, because yes. I'm doing things I haven't done in forever, but there are days that I go to the class, I'm like, huh, I had one yesterday, as a matter of fact. I didn't feel like going to work out. It was just one of those days, yes. you know? And I ended up getting my stuff together, and I went to work out, and I felt so much better afterwards. Afterwards, yes. You know, so it is yes. definitely do something. Do something, do something. Okay, thank you for that. Hey, no worries. Okay. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Our next question comes from Sandra, and she wants to know if there's something else she can do or something she can take to reduce belly fat. Um, she walks about two times a week, mm -hmm. 45 minutes to an hour each time. Right. Uh, she can't uh, do sit-ups or crunches because of her back, but she can lay flat on her, on her back mm -hmm. and lift her legs. Um, any suggestions? Whenever you do any kind of exercise for the midsection, um, you want to be able to um, uh, use those muscles, tighten, mm -hmm. um, even if it's just to raise your legs, make sure your core is intact. Uh, and by that I mean, you know, tighten your belly, tighten your glutes, which is your backside, um, <laughs> and that'll all happen. And also watch some of your proteins, because protein is known to support muscle. Yes. Muscle will then start working on the excess fat in certain areas of the body. Yeah. But go back to the last question, Move, move, move a little bit. Move. And keep moving, and that energy will, will definitely go. But work on that core, when you do your exercise on the floor, leg lifts, whatever, just tighten that core area, and that should help burn some of that extra, excess fat in the midsection. At least that's what I've learned. That will definitely help tighten, uh, tone your abdominal muscles. You, Sandra mentioned something about her back, so that indicates that there's a medical issue there. Then anything uh, you do, go check with the doctor yes, first. Yes, <laughs> check with the doctor for his, his or her recommendation right. on how strenuous you can work out mm -hmm. and what um, moves you need to stay away from so that's real important as well because you don't want to uh, worsen your injury right. and then incapacitate yourself so you can't do anything the other thing that comes to mind uh, my understanding of fitness is that you cannot spot reduce you can spot tone which means fat burning is a whole body process mm -hmm. I wish 
I could decide to <laughs> lose fat in my triceps. <laughs> poof, I you're gone. Poof, you're gone. It doesn't work that way. So when you do um, cardio uh, workouts, right. that's a whole body fat burning process. And so it will affect the abdominal um, area as well. You can spot tone mm -hmm. with weights and, you know, I can tone my triceps and, and, and focus just on those. What I would recommend for you in that regard, if your doctor says it's okay, is Pilates or yoga because they are highly high they the intensity is high enough to burn do the whole body burn and focused enough to do the the spot toning so i think those two might work well for you mm -hmm. uh, and and they are uh, adjusted for your level and but clear it with your doctor first absolutely and one last thing about that um sandra is uh, fitness starts with nutrition um all of the personal trainers that I know say that uh, nutrition is about 80 to 85 percent of fitness. So people think that they need to sweat in a gym for hours every day to be fit, and that is not the case. The, the workout, the physical stuff really definitely helps. However, nutrition needs to be addressed by minimizing excess fat and excess sugar consumption, which creates the fat in the first place. And the other thing is, from my personal experience uh, with my digestive issues and food allergies, I know that uh, a, a distended or big pot belly is not always from fat. It could be inflammation in the digestive tract. Uh, so get that checked out as well and, and follow your doctor's recommendations in that regard as well. So take that i hope it helps and good advice yeah and we will see if it works absolutely yeah we have to be very mindful that health is not just one aspect so mm -hmm. it's not just the physical activity that will reduce your fat it's the nutrition it's the mental approach it's the um the medical approach etc so well said thank you thank you and speaking of nutrition i want to introduce the feed glen challenge because of my food allergies and digestive issues i have a, a difficult time with a variety of foods. So I need dietitians, nutrition, nutritionists, and chefs to help me create a meal plan that is creative and for, has variety and is nourishing for me. So go to our Facebook page, Living in Total Health, for more information, and I hope you can help me out. So that is our show for today. Yes. Please help me, th help me welcome, and I'm sorry, thank Aaron Phillips. <laughs> Who will be on a radio channel near you real soon as I'll be launching a new show March 5th called Aaron's Hour. Yes, and that'll be on his Facebook page as well. Yes. Yes. And my website. Yes. AaronPhillipsVoice.com. So thank you, Aaron, for being my here pleasure. and sharing thank your you story with us. And we will see you on the next episode. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.